Now, we are going to study critical aspects as technique and style in Bleak House. In these three uh, videos, you will find that all aspects related to Bleak House, whether it is technique, plot, character, and uh, even uh, symbol, motif. You know, you see it is a plot of uh, Bleak House, then setting of Bleak House. Then you will find that the fog, which is a very I mean, symbolic aspect is being taken here. Then symbolism in Bleak House. All these simple and uh, then we will discuss the major characters, Lady Deadlock, then Easter Summerson, then uh, jo John Dyers and uh, Mr. Tuckinghorn. So my concern would be, uh, I'll just try to do what I'll do. Uh, these characters I will take separately. But first of all, let's come to the symbolism plot, character and all these, uh, you know, significant things related to Bleak House. So let me come to this aspect which we uh, were starting, technique and style, okay, in Bleak House. Uh, Bleak House was written about a century, century and a half ago. Pro style, like almost everything else, has changed. Naturally, today, the readers may find Dickens' manner rather unfamiliar and in some ways in a bit difficult. In order to see Bleak House in the right perspective, it is necessary to pursue this point. Many people today are no longer well-practiced readers. Uh, like reading is missing right now uh, in our generation. Reading is missing. Television and films are preferred pastime and what people do read is more likely to be journalism or captions under pictures. Then the prose of the literary uh, artists like Dickens. Dickens wrote for an audience that loved to read and was unafraid to tackle a work of serious literature such as uh, receptive and well prepared and or at least cooperative audience freed Dickens to pitch his writing at a level and satisfied his artistic concise. Blake House was written about a century and a half ago. This is again a point is repeated here. In other words, Dickens was not forced to use only a very limited vocabulary or uh, to forego sub, uh, subtleties of the tone or emphasis, nor did he feel obliged to keep all his uh, sentences short and simply constructed when emotions or the complexity of an idea carried out for longer or more complicated ones. He also knew that his reader were uh, responsive to uh, playfulness in words and hence would not insist that he keep, he keep coming bluntly to the point uh, and get on with things. And uh, so he was free to play one of his favorite roles, the uh, entertainer. Uh, here, a verbal entertainer, as elsewhere, a mimic or theatrical entertainer. Dickens was an active public reader, actor, and practical joker, as well as an author. In Bleak House, Dickens turns a classical illusion turns a classical illusion into a joke, but only because his readers far more liter literature than today's reader. Uh, literate than today's reader would recognize the illusion and therefore apprentice the twist. When we read Dickens or many 19th century writers, we need to remember it, uh, this uh, fortunate, this fortune, productive relationship between the author and the reading public. Despite their strong streak of uh, puritanism and the limitation inherent in their middle class outlook, Dickens readers far from demanding that the author uh, that the author write down to their level were generally eager to have a book uh, that helped them to a higher level. They, wa they wanted guidance on the issue of the time and they uh, also wanted to progress personally to become more knowledgeable about sundry matters and more skilled in language. 19th century society considered skill in writing and reading necessary for anyone who is aspire to be genteel or even civilized in a great many households and throughout the educational system. The promotion of these skills had the power of moral force. In short, a writer in Dickens' era had great respect for his audience and strong rapport with it, an exciting situation to be in. Even in casual conversation, the characters in Bleak House, except for those or at near the very bottom of the social ladder, like Joe, speak rather uh, elaborately their grammar, unless Dickens is making fun of some idiosyncrasies of expression, is flawless. They command a sophisticated vocabulary and tend to favor the formal word or phrases. Their sentences can become quite involved without becoming unclear. It may be hard for us to believe that people ever really spoke that way, but they did. 
count correctness in language as a matter was a central concern for the typical middle class person Co correctness correctness and relative formality of expression were part and parcel of the society that was both satisfied uh, into class classes and strongly influenced by classical education blake house has two additional uh, oddities of techniques that is the manner in which the story is presented first throughout the novel there is an al uh, alliteration alteration in the point of view from which the story is being told second there is corresponding alliteration between present tense and past tense this is what the writing style so i repeat it again i guess this would help you a lot and what is that bleak house has two bleak house has two uh, oddities of technique that is the manner in which the story is presented first throughout the novel there is an alliteration in the point of view from which the story is being told second there is corresponding alliteration between present tense and past tense so strange use of present tense narration is so unusual that we read we, we hardly know what to expect from moment to moment thus there is a sort of suspense in the method itself well in the plot enforces us to be enjoyable alert and we have already had to become quite alert in order to catch dickens persist persistent verbal irony that is is saying one thing and actually meaning something else that combination of continual irony and present tense narration gives the writing great intensity by far the large part of the story is narrated in this way by the omniscient author but surprisingly dickens switches every now and then to easter's narrative al allowing easter submersion to do some for the telling this alliteration strikes many people as an awkward and highly artificial technique because the reader remain aware that easter narrative is still really dickens narrative in other words the alliteration causes the point of view to call all alliteration to itself for no good reason the simultaneous change from present to past tense makes the awkwardness all more conspicuous on the other hand even if they come at a price is this narrative are a well a uh, welcome relief present tense narration and is and uh, noted about vivid and intense it is the closest it is the closest that fiction can get to intensity of drama where action is unfolded in present and one as one watches but for this very reason a relief is indeed in an immensely long work like bleak house intensity can become fatiguing with the switch to the lower which the uh, switch to the lower intensity of past tense comes an equally a welcome change of the tone dickens omniscient author narration is almost consistently mocking and satiric in tone it is a brilliant achievement but it is still basically monochrome monochromatic or one tone easter narrative provide the contrast her outlook is and fresh and innocent as dickens is, is severely jaded and she has a many tone as she has responses within the omniscient author portion of the book dickens makes his presentation as entertaining as possible going out of his way to create variety and liveliness he keeps us awake awake and amused by varying his tempo and length the structure of his sentences he uses a rage racy colloquialism creates original figures of speech forceful repetitions and parallel constructions as take kato like fragment and other attentions getting techniques critical aspects as plot of bleak house which is very significant please focus on that plot of bleak house dickens taste in a plot seems to have been influenced by 18th century novel list henry fielding joseph and drews 1742 tom jones 1749 then by any anyone else in any even the typical dickens plot like the plot of fielding is complicated loosely constructed and highly dramatic in incidents that make make it up the main plot is usually interwoven with a number in a number of subplot that involves numerous in incidents and cover a period of several or many years such multiplicity multi uh, mili takes against the possibility of feeling the story a unity distinctly that is of holding all the incidents in our mind at once and feeling their account connectedness plot loosens loose of loose, loose looseness of construction can mean various things some of the subplots may not be related to the main plot one or more of the subplot may be more highly developed or inherently more interesting than the main plot creaky devices of highly in 
improbable coincidences may be brought into uh, get the author out of jam created by lack of advanced planning or the main plot itself may consist of several self-contained episodes rather than that of central developing unified action the main plot of bleak house the story of the lady deadlocks past unfolding in the present and developing into a new situation that involves the books rather than heroine easter summerson Though implicated is artistically controlled and the subplot are kept subordinate and for most part are woven smoothly into it. Please listen it again and again. Dickens taste in plot seems... Uh, okay, this is a repeated thing. Right. Plot in the plot, this paragraph, whole paragraph is a repetition. So, if I say... You see, just take a screenshot and this will help you to remember. You just can read out and it's all talking about that. Plot in sense of a meaningfully related mental and physical action implied direct movement and change and therefore possess inherent energy dynamism. Dickens an energetic, ambitious, relatively extro, uh, extroverted artist, a born entertainer and lover of obesity. Could be expected to put much of his novelistic stock in plot. This disposition alone would also explain the fact that Dickens' book feature highly dramatic, sometimes melodramatic sentences. Dickens loved historicity, his, uh, his uh, histrionic action cramp action crammed theatre, he haunted London's theatre, wrote and acted in a several plays himself and loved to give his dramatic reading. It is surprising that he allowed theatre itself to influence his action. In the, in the 20th century, the deliberately plotless novel has had a certain vogue. A number of talented and not so talented writers, Virginia Woolf among the former, decided that uh, since itself, uh, that it's a life itself uh, form, hour to hour and day today is seldom dramatic and worse yet sometimes not even noticeably meaningful truly lifelike realistic fiction could forego the luxury of plot taking its cue from one such writer and their admiring critics classroom teaching of lecture has shown a tendency to think that only bumpkins insist on plot the same indifference or to contempt for plot has shown why writers who prof prefer the critics and teachers who want a socio-political ideological masses message more than anything else. Finally, as a stock of writer, critics, psychological and or psychiatric problem of characters has gone up, the value of plot has gone uh, correspondingly down. It may be worthwhile to know that meaningful action, whether physical or mental, does have a certain charm. In fact, at least outside the English classroom and critics, critical essays, it is common knowledge that all the kind of material that may be presented to us. Meaningful action is the kind uh, most likely to hold our interest and generate excitement. Whatever literally critic in, uh, in the know may claim, the fact is that the human species has an insatiable th uh, thrift thirst for direct directed action, whether physical or as Wimbledon or mental as in uh, Il Ilcino. It is also a fact that virtually all of the stories and plays that have come to be regarded as classic for the Iliad to come, Kim, and have full of plot. The setting of Bleak House, critical aspect as setting of Bleak House. Most of, most of, the, most of the action of Bleak House takes place in or near London, around 1850. The London street scenes are in a hall bond district or the north bank of the Thames and very close to the river. The deceptions, uh, depictions of neighborhood, street building, working conditions, lighting, uh, lighting, weather, dress and depart, uh, de deportment of persons, etc. are completely authentic. The fog remains the most famous fog in all literature, dense, long-lasting blanket of it, yellowish or yellow-brown with Pollutants were common in coal burning London of Dickens' time. And later, the description of the going on at uh, Chancery Court are equally authentic, although Dickens provide only those details that support his, uh, his point. The deadlock, the deadlock's country estate as Chesney Vault is about 150 miles from London, is Lincolnshire, a large agricultural county in East Central England. St. Albans, where uh, John John Dyer's Bleak House stands, is a small town. In 1850, it would have been 
are about 20 miles from the northern outskirts of London. Easter Summer Sun was born as Windsor, site of Windsor Place, about 20 miles straight west of London. 15 miles further west in much larger city of the Reading Pronouns Reading, where Easter went to school. Richard Carson attended, attended school at Wins, uh, Winchester, famous for its uh, huge ancient cathedral, some 50 miles from uh, south of Reading and close to the English Channel. The new bleak house that Mr. John Dice builds for uh, Easter and Alan Woodcart is in Yorkshire, England's last largest country north of Lincolnshire. This new house would be 175 to 200 miles northeast of London. There are several rural scenes as Dickens enjoys England's green and pleasant land, yet countryside fails, fails to kindle his imagination the way the city does. Uh, hating city smoke as much as anyone, Dickens nevertheless lapses into contro uh, conventionality whether he breathes the country air, when he breathes the country air. Critical aspect of, uh, uh, of the novel, The Fog. No, no, the, the fog. The a literary work, a literary work does not necessarily become depressing or morbid simply because some of its uh, subjects are gloomy, painful, or even grisly. Shakespeare Macbeth gives us scenes after scenes uh, of dark atmosphere, crime, natural and supernatural, evil, horror, and insanity. Yet play has remained immensely popular for four centuries. Everything depends. Uh, everything depends not on subject itself, on the writer's treatment of it, meaning, technique, manner of the presentation, presenting the story, and prose style, choices in words, phrase, and sentences. Henry, a uh, heavy persistent fog is not something that tends to lift uh, spirits and brighten faces. In a story such as fog may even serve as a symbol of institutional operation and human confusion and mystery. Now remember this point that, uh, you know, in a story, uh, up to here, please uh, read it again. In a story such as folk may even serve as a symbol of institutional oppression and human conf confusion uh, and mystery, misery. The folk that Dickens create for Bleak House serves him exactly that way and yet it is not, after all, a real life folk. But a verbal description of the real life thing, how uh, that depiction is managed, in other words, expression becomes the crucial point, the real issues. If by plunging as again and again into the London fog, Dickens is trying to depress um, us, he is on a shaky ground. All of us tend to seek pleasure and avoid pain. If the, if the writing taken up with an open mind and given a fair trial really depressed us, we are quite likely to stop reading and declare Dickens as impossible unreadable author. But if we examine our actual response to the densely fog and otherwise implicable November weather uh, Dickens describes, we find we will find it to be something different from sheet depression or uh, innervation. Our response, the one Dickens wants us to have, is probably complex and ambivalent. True, Dickens sees the foggy mirror of the London Street as a uh, nuisance, the unpleasantness and source of vexation and uh, dispirited, de dispiritedness. But he also finds such an extra and condition condition uh, interesting because they are rare or unusual, extreme in almost anything read the uh, read to tend to uh, generate interest. The fog is striking, piquant, is even uh, has something of the glimmer of mysterious. In short, Dickens is an artist who delights in imagination and who is in charge of his material as imagined and writes his uh, things. He is enjoying the fog he creates and enjoying his inevitable con uh, conveyed uh, to us as we read. In fact, part of what Dickens delight as it puts fog uh, together word by word in his very ability to describe to interestingly. In turn, admire. If only unconsciously, Dickens' mastery of the craft of writing and admiration is a far from unpleasant thing for us to experience. There are even more obvious elements of positive in Dickens' clear paragraph about the fog. There are uh, there are witticism and jesting figure of speech, as an idea of meeting up with a, a mega a mega low saurus or of a shooting being like a snowflakes gone into morning 
for the death of the son in some uh, though dickens certainly does make the dickens uh, does make his fox symbol symbolize middle and uh, muddled and muddles and miseries and thus tie in with the theme of social criticism that is in the whole story in the final analysis of our experience as we read is an experience not of the fog itself but of expression of the word that create the fog we find the fog not so much depressing as in, un, uninteresting it is a vivid exp, uh, creation and sentence and phrases that created cat uh, its crackle with imagination alternness and energy it is this critical aspect as symbolism in bleak house so after completing this symbolism we'll deal the characters separately because the next segment which is coming that is the character so let us just complete this and then this will be the end of the video this video is going to be small uh, listen it again and again take the screenshot if you wish themes or motif are often presented themes and motif are often presented through symbols that is images used in such a way as to suggest a meaning beyond the physical fact of the imagined images themselves themes or motif are often presented through symbols that is images used in such a way as to suggest the meaning beyond the physical fact of the images themselves two quite effective symbol in bleak house are the fog and uh, the roman uh, who point down from mr tucking horn ceiling and symbolizes the theme of re attribution uh, of evil ultimately bringing ruin upon itself skillfully handled symbolism adds both impact and unity in a literary work or for that matter to any piece of writing it has the impact also called power of the concrete and it helps unifying subject is repeat in a different form and motif that are being presented through plot and character portrayal symbolism is commonly called a device or a technique but these terms are somehow misleading because they imply conscious manipulations by the author and also imply that in fact symbolism is extremely and might be uh, learned by anyone in a classroom or a form an instruction manual or how to write as its best symbolism comes straight out of the individual writer's unconscious and artistry it is inst- it is instinctive and individual and often a mark of genius symbols are often used to uh, foreshadow later events in a story in turn the technique of foreshadowing lends unity to the story because it prepares us dealing with things that will be developed develop later on the bleak house fog uh, the bleak house fog is a complex symbol that foreshadows several motif of important richard carson for example gradually becomes lost and able to see in the mental and spiritual fog generated by the high court of chancery so here we will end it and uh, thank you so much for giving your precious time uh, thank you please subscribe like share and uh, uh, visit again the channel dr anjugrava write your beautiful name in the comment thank you so much